This is Allison from C.C. Mellor Memorial Library. Let's make a cute little Among Us felt plush together. So what you'll need are the instructions, or you can just follow this video, but if you want the printed instructions, they are on our website, and I will put that link in the description box below. We also have a printable uh, felt plush pattern template. So in this template that I drew up, we have our little cute body. This one measures, I think about four inches. Let's see, I'm gonna use my ruler here. Yeah, he's a little bit less than four inches tall. So like a good uh, kind of squishable uh, thing that you can make into a keychain or a magnet or just a cool little ornament or whatever, decorate as you'd like. So this has the body, your visor, and your backpack. These are separate pieces. And then I also included some of the fun um, accessories. So mostly the ones that I thought would be easy to replicate in felt, but of course get creative. So those are there for you. In order to make this cute little plush, you can pick up a free kit from our library uh, with all the materials, or if you're at home and you aren't, uh, you know, going to come into our library, you can put it together yourself. And it's really easy. So all you'll need is uh, about a six by seven felt for your body and your backpack in your main color. So right today I'm going to use red and you can see I even already had chopped a bit out of this when I was playing around, but you just need a piece of red or whatever your color is. So you want enough for your backpack and your body. You're going to need a small scrap of felt for your visor. I'm going to make mine light blue because that's the color they are in the game, but you could probably use like gray or white or whatever you want to do. It'd be cool to do like a pop art kind of thing with different bright colors. You're going to need a needle, of course. Since we're using embroidery floss, you need a needle that, I don't know if I can get it to focus, but you need a needle that uh, has a wide enough eye for your embroidery floss to fit through. So I just have a cross stitch needle because it's used for, um, for cross stitching, which uses, you know, embroidery floss. And it doesn't need to be super sharp. This is actually a tapestry needle, which is blunt. And I find that it goes easily through my belt. But if you want to use a sharp needle, you know, go with what you have. This is, uh, well, I guess now it's 2021. So <laughs> get creative with what you have. So you're going to need also your embroidery floss. I'm using red. So theoretically, you could use one that matches. Since I'm teaching you how to do this project today, I am going to use a contrasting thread. But if you want it to blend and look nice, use a matching one. You're also, since he's a little plush, you're going to need some fluff. And this is just polyfill that I picked up at the craft store. Um, but you can also stuff your little guy with whatever you'd like. Wood shavings or um, I know like a lot of people do those like crushed up walnuts and stuff. So get creative. This is an example of one I made. I didn't finish him because I was just testing out how to do it. So we're going to have our full body. Eventually I'll stuff him and finish sewing around the top. <laughs> but you're going to have your body and you're going to have your little backpack. It's kind of a separate situation. And then, uh, yeah. All right. Optional, you can have little bits of bits of felt for accessories. I have a really stiff felt here because I found that it was easier to like make things stand up. But since your project's fairly small, the felt doesn't, um, stiffness doesn't really matter. So whatever you have, you can probably get to work. All right. Step one, you're going to need your template. Let me move things out of the way. On your template, you can either cut out directly your piece or you can grab your paper, run a bunch of glue on the back and stick it on something like cardstock. Maybe you have an old holiday card that you're trying to recycle. Maybe you have um, a, a cereal box that would be nice and stiff and then cut it out. I find that if I have it on cardstock or something sturdier, it's easier to trace 
and it um, it'll last you a bit longer. So I have my pieces that are cut out and I actually put them in this tiny little baggie. So these are actually the ones I had when I was developing the, the template. Trace your shape onto felt. I like to start with my main character because that's, you know, the biggest part. So since I'm doing red, I have my little um, main character, main body piece. And I'm just going to, since I'm trying to conserve felt, get him kind of right in the edge. And you want to trace right on the edge. I'm going to use a pen for this. You could use a Sharpie or whatever you like because you can always cut off your line. But I'm going to trace all the way around my little body. And you're going to need two of these. So trace one and then go to the next one and I'm just going to trace another one. Oops. These characters are such a simple shape, it makes it pretty easy. So you need two of those. While I have my pen out, I am going to also trace my backpack color because I know I want my backpack to be the same color as my main body. So I'm just gonna go up in the edge and trace it. And you need two of these also. And be careful because sometimes with felt, as you can see, ink can transfer to your fingers and you don't want to get that everywhere. So we'll just go through and I'm just going to trim off some of these pieces. Get them. So we have one person, one body, the other body. These are the inky sides. I'm going to make sure that those ultimately end up facing each other. And then we have our backpack. So two of each. Next, we're going to trace and cut out our visor. So this is the blue piece. And I have that right here. Kind of looks like you know, a big oval. And since I can fit it this way, I'm going to do that so that I can make a bunch with this small piece of felt. All right, that's easy. right where I want it to be. And now if you don't want to sew, you could easily just like hot glue, um, hot glue can be tricky with felt, but you can glue that guy down if you have some really strong glue. And then you don't have to sew, but I'm going to sew because I think it looks uh, nice. And also I struggle with glue a lot. So I think for my floss, since we are, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a contrasting color. It's a little bit thing, but plus it kind of goes for Valentine's Day and 
that'll come eventually, right? So when I take my floss, I like to, so this is, I wound it on a bobbin, but you might just have floss just already, you know, from the store. I like to take about the length of my forearm, so I'll kind of measure and then just double it. And I find that that's like a good length for me for sewing because otherwise it gets too long and I get overwhelmed or, or it gets tangled, which is frustrating. From this, floss is usually, oops, let's find the end. Floss is usually six strands. So I want to use about two strands for this project. I find that that makes it show up, but it's not kind of too bulky. So you're gonna grab your two strands, pinch the rest and just pull them out. See how it, you, and you're gonna think, oh, so you'll have your two and you're gonna think, oh no, I've got this big ball and I made a huge mess and now I'm not gonna be able to unknot it. But if you just grab the end of it, pull straight, it's like magic, it's perfectly fine. Put this to the side for the next time you need to reload your um, rethread. Rethread your needle. Oof. Sometimes words are just hard. All right, I'm gonna grab my needle. It has the eye that's pretty, I think, with my inky fingers. And I'm just going to try to thread this through. As I said, I am not the best needle threader because I don't have great eyesight. So I'm gonna grab my needle threader, which is right here. <laughs> I should have added one thing and it has this like little flimsy metal bit or wire bit that you thread through if you can thread this by eye I mean you, it's easy to do but I am not great at that where did I put my oh here we go here we go we have our thread we have our needle threader pop your thread right through the big hole of your needle threader and then you're just gonna pull your needle threader and it threads your needle and then you can just pull that off put it to the side for the next time you need to thread your needle I'm putting it next to my extra thread then you're gonna come down to your end here and just tie a knot I here's how I like to tie my knots I grab the thread kind of in my thumb and middle finger and I'm gonna tie it end up tying it over my pointer finger so I roll it around oops I roll it around so it kind of makes this X do you see that? And then I use my thumb and I just roll it right off. So it makes this swirly twirl. And then, oof, so you'll have something like this. And then I just pinch and pull it down kind of like that. And it makes this big old knot that's not gonna fall through anything. I'm gonna start my knot, obviously, on the back. So I'm gonna come through the back and come up the middle, or not come up the middle, but I'm gonna go through the back, so my knot is in the back, and come up through my blue piece. And I'm just, you can use um, a pin or something to hold it in place, but I found I kind of just stabbed myself if I did that because this project is so small that you can really just hold it with your thumb and it'll stay in. The stitch that I like to do for the visor is kind of almost stripey. So we've come up this part, right? And then I like to stitch right outside of it. So I'm going just through the red and I'm gonna pull it through. Oops. So you see how I have just a little stripe. I'm gonna just repeat that. So I'm gonna come up through the blue, the stiff thread or felt is tricky. Come through the blue and then go right out. Do it well, if I do it there, it'll face that way maybe kind of right there out through the red and I'm gonna do this all the way around so I'm coming up through the two layers I think I needed a sharper needle for this stiff felt goodness and then out through the red just be patient this is just part of the meditative part of making a little felt plush I will speed this up so that you can see it. All right, I'm just going all the way around. I want my stripes to be about 
the same distance and about the same kind of length. But see how they're not perfect? I can't be perfect sometimes. <laughs> it's just going to be cute no matter what. You could, of course, always just do like a straight stitch all the way around or use your sewing machine. You have one and stitch it on. You do whatever kind of decorative embroidery stitch you want, but this one I like. Whoops, I'm knocking my a bunch of lamps here. All right, so here we are, my last stitch going back out to the back and then we're going to knot it off you can see it's not perfect these parts are way bigger but it is what it is so how I like to knot mine off is I'm gonna go through my last kind of stitch here if I pull on it you'll see that it pulls my thread like it'll pull up my thread that's the one I want to go through and I'm gonna just go through it like that and then I'll have this loop here. Do you see it? And I want to come through that loop and then pull tight. Not so much that you're going to like pull your project on, but you know, you want to pull it fairly tight. So it kind of makes this little knot, but I like to have another knot. So I'm going to go right through back through the same, same spot. So I have my loop and I'm going to come back through, oops, back through my loop and just go down and then since this is on the inside I'm not worried about hiding my thread or anything I'm just going to snip it out and now you've got your face all right next we're gonna do the backpack so I still have some thread on here I think I can probably make it all the way around if not whatever here's how we do the backpack I like to just do a whip stitch. So what that is, let's move him to the side. Means I have my two pieces. I'm putting the side with the inky edge in. Actually, maybe I'll just go through, neaten it up a little bit. Cute. All right. And I'm gonna whip stitch them shut. So first, I made my knot at the end, just the same as I did before, and I'm going to go up. I like to start ooh, on the side, and so I'm going to hide my needle in between these two layers. So I'm going to go up through, just like that, so that my knot stops, and then I'm going to squish it shut, make sure I don't see my knot from the side, and I'm just going to go around. And this is a whip stitch, so I'm just going across and back through, across and back through. Yeah, well, that didn't look that nice, did it? But I'm sure yours will look very nice. Across and back through. 
through and you can kind of check and if you find that your stitches aren't looking that good you can kind of pop them down and remember your floss will probably match your uh, felt whereas this one really stands out and you can really see it um, but I'm just gonna keep going all the way around my jetpack piece if you don't want to do a whip stitch you could just do a straight stitch here too but i figured since we're using embroidery floss i kind of like seeing the work that goes into her project sometimes <laughs> i just think it's a it's a fun handmade touch so i quickly stitched around the edge it's not perfect but i'm sure you'll take more time with yours and i just have whip stitches all the way around except for this side so coming back to where we started and I want to leave a gap so that I can fill mine. So I want it at least as wide as my little finger so that I can really get the, the stuffing in there. I'm going to take, well, I'm just going to have my needle off to the side for now because it fell off. But you can leave it on if you want. And I'm going to take a little bit of my stuffing and I'm going to fill my backpack. and. Sometimes easiest if you just do a little bit, a well, little bit at a time. And we left this opening, so I'm just kind of stick it down in there. If you feel you want to leave this whole side open in order to stuff it, um, go for it. See how I'm really getting my finger in there, so it's down in the corner. But um, but you really sometimes it's easier to have part of the sides stu uh, stitched up so that you can, um, when you go to stitch it closed, it's just a little bit easier instead of trying to like squeeze the whole thing. All right, here we go. I think that's a good amount in my backpack. So it kind of has some presence, but it's not huge. I think that's about as much as I put, well, yeah, in this backpack, it looks pretty similar. So go back to where your thread is and see how if I close that up, it's a little bit easier than trying to stitch the whole thing. So, re-thread my needle. I know. And put your floss back through. And then, put through again. I just have a little bit here, but I think it should get me across this little, little divide. So just continue your whip stitch and close up your gap. It's pretty good. Do one more stitch maybe. All right. And then here's how you're going to knot this part. You go right through where you were. So so here's where I was, right? And go right back through that stitch, like so. Can you see that? And then I'm going to grab it. And since my thread is so short, and I'm getting it tangled. Oop, I lost my chance. Let's try again. thread of my needle all right we'll try again so you go through a stitch pull it I'm trying not to have my needle on thread you have your loop right you're going to try to go back through that loop. Pull tight. So this is the first part of your knot. Then we're going to do the same exact thing. One. And then back through your loop. And pull tight. And then I like to bury. So instead of like having this edge just kind of hang in. I like to bury it in there. So I'm going to go through kind of in between the two layers. With my needle and I'm just gonna come out like in a random spot over on the other side but and then I'm gonna grab it and pull it so I just have this like thread that's just chilling in the middle but on the side you can't really tell where my knot was 
And I'm just going to use a smaller pair of to grab my thread. See it's standing apart from it. And I'm just going to pull it a little bit, snip, and then kind of fluff it out. You've buried your thread. See, there's nothing coming out the middle. Everything good. So backpack done. So now we are on to attaching the backpack to the body. So here was my front piece. Keep this to the side. Here's your back piece. I know that the side with the ink I want inside. So this will be my back. Ooh, I'm getting little fuzzies from the thread everywhere. Grab your backpack that you just did. Figure out what direction you want yours to go in. I think mine goes this way. And place it right in the middle of the back. Then I need some more thread. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Grab my two strands and oops what am I doing okay. all right I'm gonna make a knot on one end like so and then I'm going to hold these two together. I'm going to come in through the middle because the back, no one's going to see it. I'm coming up through this piece. And then I'm going to come up just through the back of my backpack. And I'm going to have just come out in the middle. Because remember, with this part, we don't want it stitched, like the side stitched down. We want, we're just gonna stitch the middle part so that it will stand apart from it. So if it was like that, it would be like a turtle shell, but now it's up. So it kind of looks more like the game. All right, so I've come up behind that. I'm just gonna go right, right where I am, go right back to the back. So right now, technically, it's on there. But if you wanna straighten it a little bit, and maybe put a bunch so i'm gonna go i'm in through here i'm going through the back fabric and coming come kind of back up see how these stitches don't need to be perfect i'm just gonna kind of wherever i feel like whoops i want this part so see how it's kind of free flowing on the side i want more stitches over there so i'm going to kind of move my needle so i'm getting get over there and stitcher on. Mm -hmm. It's looking pretty good. I'm just going to kind of, from this part, do a few more stitches. Just, just to really make it secure. Let's check it. All right, this side, okay, this side feels like if this was my thing, I think this side has more give than this side, so let's put a couple more stitches on this side. And the inside can look as messy as you want. Looks good, looks good. And... There we go. What do we think? Look pretty even all the way around. Looks pretty good. And remember, your thread will match. So you won't really be able to see that. Even like if I pull, you can't even see it, even though it doesn't match. I'm going to do my same knot. I'm going to go under one of the loops that's nearby, pull through until I have this uh, extra loop. And I'm just going to go right through it. And then I'm going to do it one more time. So pull till you have a loop, go through your loop, and pull it tight. And then since this is going to be on the inside, you can um, knot it off or cut it off. All right. Next, you have two options. You, we can, if you're just making the body, you can stitch the whole body 
starting the toe and stitch all the way around the head and then like to right here you want to leave a gap so that we can stuff the body or option another option is if you want to add an accessory so next to me in our template we have what do we have we have a hat we have the fedora we have the birthday cake hat i mean the birthday uh, pom-pom hat, the party hat. We have the leaves, cherry, bat wings. You want to add those kind of while you're stitching it shut. So I think I'm going to do the leaves. All right, so now I have my thread needle and I'm going to start down kind of like where his legs are. I'm starting again, so on the inside. I'm going to make sure these are perfectly sandwiched so my knot is buried inside and kind of just tuck it in. And then you can whip stitch or you can do a straight stitch. I think with this one, I'm going to... Hmm, let's do a whip stitch again. So coming around, so back and forward. All right, so I've stitched starting from here all the way around up to where I want the accessory to go. If you have another accessory, like say bat wings that would be on each side, you would wanna stop right where you're gonna put it. And I'm going to, actually I kind of forgot and had been stitching, but all right, pull apart a little bit and you wanna put your stem, see why I said it's better if it's longer? down in there and kind of pinch it and see if it's where you want it. What do we think? Does it look pretty good? It's pretty good. I like that. And then I'm going to take my thread and instead of going around it, I'm going to go through all three layers. And since it can be a little stiff, so be patient and don't stab yourself. <laughs> and then pull through. I'm going to go from the back. Now, I am, so I've come out the back. I'm gonna go back, make a back stitch. So back where I was from and go right through all three layers again. I'm being really patient. So it helps if, with felt if you do a little wiggle instead of like trying to force it through. So I'm back where I was. And that back stitching makes kind of like it locks it in place. So I'm back here and I'm gonna go back through where I was. Oops, you can see I've missed the back, so I'm just gonna go back down. So here's what I have. Make sure it looks pretty good. Then I'm gonna go through the back on the other side. So instead of going back where I was, I'm going kind of forward. And pull through. It's missing on the front, so I'm gonna a stitch down in there and go forward again all through my layers like so. So it'll look like that. Now this is pretty in there like don't I mean felt you don't really want to pull felt because oh this is sturdy felt though <laughs> I'm really pulling but a lot of felt will kind of just rip because it's just fibers that have kind of all been squished and melted together. But, um, but yeah, so now we have our accessory and I'm going to keep stitching. So I'm gonna go one kind of straight stitch. So going forward and then I'm going to continue my um, whip stitching now that I'm out of the way of my thing. And I'm just gonna whip stitch down to a 
a space that is about an inch and a half. So, oops. Let's see. This one. Where do I put a couple of these? There we go. All right. So here's what we have. I'm going to set that down for a second. I've stitched starting from down here all the way around the legs. Up. We did a little back stat stitch tacking up there to get our accessory in and see how nicely it stands up. <laughs> and then... Go back here. And then we should have this gap. And that's how we're going to stuff it. So let's grab our stuffing. And with this stuffing, I like to do the furthest leg first. So I'm just going to grab a little bit and pop it in. And I'm going to use my finger to get it down into this little dude's leg. If you're having trouble, you can use something like a chopstick or a um, pencil, something like that. But I'm going to go just so that side has some stuffing in it. You can kind of squeeze it from the side to kind of fluff it up. Looks good. And then I'm going to put it on this outer edge. And kind of up. So I'm not putting it directly in the middle. I'm putting it up into the leg and then out kind of the top of the head. Watch your watch your needle. If it helps to unthread your needle while you're doing this so you don't accidentally stab yourself. <laughs> Safety first. So small pieces. And I'm gonna put this in this leg. That's why I always say stitch your small parts, your extremities first and leave the hole on the side. And then I'm going to do the middle. So filling up his little belly with fluff. You might be surprised how much fluff actually can get packed into these little dudes. And make them as fluffy or as not fluffy as you want. You want to make sure you can close it, right? So let me take a little bit extra work from that edge, and then okay, let's look at it from this side. This this leg seems a little bit put a little bit more. All right, yeah, it's pretty good. Remember, you can always like squish things around if you feel the need. I think he's really cute. Okay, so I'm satisfied. So I'm gonna kind of push the felt, the fluff in, and pinch the part I need to have sew shut. And I'm just gonna go and continue my. Um, whip stitching and whip stitch it closed. You have bits of fluff kind of sticking out. You can use your needle to push them down in and then kind of just reinforce them out. All right, now I'm going to tie my knot. So I'm going to grab, well, let's see. Let's grab this one. Go under your loop, have your loop, through your loop, pull tight, do it again. So through. Here's your loop. Can you see it? Go through and pull again. And then don't cut it. You're gonna go through kind of 
the between through your two pieces and then come up not too far away because you don't want to lose your needle in your the middle that would be a bad surprise for somebody who goes to squeeze your plushie and then they get stabbed so I like to kind of let's say upper thigh and pull it through and then grab your scissors oops and pull oops Pull them a little bit tight and cut it off. And then, see, I still have a little bit left here. But if I kind of do that, there we go. And then, kind of squish around your fluff and redistribute it. And there you go. You have your little guy. He's so cute. And he's a little backpack, a little accessory. I might have got him a little cockeye. And then, final thing, if you want to make a hanging tag for him or a hanging loop, grab your floss. And I'm going to use again, I'm going to pull the needle. I'm going to go from here to there of straight across. Don't pull all the way. I'm going to just, oops, where did this loop come from? Oh, the end. And then just tie off however long you want it. So I want my loop to be about like that. And then I like to double knot. That didn't really double knot, did it? There we go. Now they'll, now they'll knot together. All right. Then I'm going to cut off my extra. And now we have our cute little hanging guy. Do -do -do -do. And you can hang him wherever you want. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial from Cece Miller Memorial Library. And I hope to see some of your projects. If you make any of these little Among Us guys using our template, tag us at ccmellerlibrary. Well, not dot com. But just tag us at ccmellerlibrary so we can see them. I'd love to see your projects. You could probably even tag at C.C. Miller Library Among Us and we would see it. I hope you had a lot of fun and I'll see you in the next tutorial.